Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel and hope you're all doing good out there. What we're going to be talking about today is external monitors and external recorders. You may ask yourself, what even is an external monitor recorder or why would I need it for wildlife photography? And I'm also going to show you a little bit of a tech that will help you get into this a little bit cheaper and a little bit easier. So let's talk about it. So the first thing we'll talk about is what even is an external monitor and recorder? Well, there are two different things. They can be both or they can be separate. So the first thing we'll talk about is an external monitor. And why would I want to use an external monitor for wildlife photography and what even is it? Well, external monitor is just like it sounds like, just like your computer. You got your laptop, or your computer, you plug an HDMI cable into that and you go into a monitor so you can see what the computer's doing. And just the same, concept is a laptop. Sometimes you have a smaller laptop screen, you want a bigger screen to see. Same concept with the camera for external monitor. You see it's a lot more in video shooting than you do for stills. So if you're a hybrid shooter, great, this is really good. But why if I'm a stills recorder when I'm an external monitor? Well, you want the external monitor for sometimes when you have something that you're setting up on a tripod or you've got something stationary where you can look at that in the back of your screen to have a bigger representation of what you're looking at. And that's the main allure to have an external monitor. So you can go from either from a little five inch all the way up to a full TV if you want to. I've done that in the studio where I've had a full TV. Right now I'm just using a flip screen, but sometimes I'll have the whole TV back there where a computer monitor where I can see what I'm looking like through the screen better. Now, what's a recorder? Well, again, just what it sounds like. All the recorders will be able to monitor just like the monitor would do. The external recorder will be a device that you can record your output of your camera through the HDMI to that recorder. You can do a clean output where you just see like what's a movie recording like your camera does. Or what you can do like what I do is you can record whatever screen that you've got set to your display on the back of your camera. It could be the EVF, like I do a lot of recording to show where the focus points are. It could be the menu settings. It could be the stat settings. It could be anything that you can display on the back of your camera. And that's what you use the external recorder for. So it's extremely, extremely powerful in that regard for video. You can also see more things about your video if you're recording just video. You can have histograms and waveforms and all that kind of stuff and different things. You can see your if you've got C-Log on, you can do your color grading also, so you can load a LUT into that thing to give what the color is going to look like when you go grade your footage post. Now, what is that bit of tech I was talking about earlier that helps you break down that barrier of cost of entry, getting into using an external monitor recorder instead of paying about $800, how to get cheaper? Well, it's a bit of tech from a company called Axum called the CMO. And this thing is about a little over $160. It's not really bad at all. And what does it do? Well, it lets you use your Apple phone, because it's iOS, iOS device, excuse me, it lets you use this as a monitor. Now, you can't go out of your camera directly with the HDMI into the lightning port on an Apple device. It just won't work. There's no software for it. But this little bit of tech has a converter for it that will work it, make it work with these two things with the software. What's hoping about this bit of tech is I don't have to carry around the Atomos when I'm out hiking and stuff because I've already got my phone with me. All I need is this little bit of piece of tech here to put the top of my camera so I can do a screen record. But I'll probably still use the Atomos when I'm sitting stationary and things like that. And it also gives me a way to record two cameras at once instead of just one. Or I could leave one in the studio and take one in the field with me all the time. But I think this will be a lot more better mobile setup. With all that said, let's get this guy in box, see what the box contents are. And then after we do that, we'll go out in the field, we'll hook this up and run through its paces and I'll tell you, do I think it's a good monitor with the phone? Does it have good specs? Does it have the software pretty good? What's the lag like and how does it record? And show you some of that footage from how it records. So let's get this guy in box, let's go out in the field, let's go play with this thing and test it. All right, let's get this guy going. Let's get this plastic off of here. Fun unboxing videos. I never thought I'd be doing this on a channel. I watch them all the time. I think they're cool. I, I love seeing what's in the boxes and what they are and stuff. So let's get into it. All right, open her up. Nothing major there. There's your obligatory instructions, which I use almost never read. 
right, let's see what's in here. We've got, packaging is really nice. The box is really nice. Um, good foam insert. There's an HDMI cable of some type. Oh, it's USB, what is this one? USB-C to USB-C. So, like I said, this is for iOS devices. So you can use your phone or you can use a tablet. So we're gonna test both of those. Uh, here is the lightning port, USB-C one. And here is the little bracket and converter here. And here is the, oh cool, comes with a hot shoe. Pretty cool, nice little one. I like this little thing here. That makes it easier. Because one thing about hot shoes that wear me out, when you use a generic one that has two, two little uh, bolts here, sorry, nuts that screw together and tighten up, the problem with those all the time is I end up this back little metal piece of plate here. I'll tighten it up and I'll shear this thing off all the time. And I've gone through so many of these. And uh, the best one I've found so far is a small rig one. And I'll show you that one too later. But this one looks a lot like the small rig one, but I like this little, little bar on the end. Now, one thing this guy does not have, which I was assumed it came with, but I should have known it didn't because of the price, is there's no battery on here. This uses a Sony battery. I'll put up on the screen here what the model of that battery is, but you gotta put that up in the back of here to power this guy up. And it does not have it. So luckily I have one, but I think I'll be going buying an extra one today uh, because of that. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this guy. Let's see, that's just a friction arm here. Is it? Ah, I see. So this pulls up by friction and this button pops out here. And I hit that button and it'll clamp to it. So let's set the phone in here, see if it works with my case. Uh, yeah, oh, that's pretty nice, I like that. So the way it works is, if I can figure out how to release it now. Oh, you just pull it back up again. So when you push this up, what happens is this button on here, and the one with Rain didn't think about that, when you put your phone in here and you push it, it puts pressure on that, which makes the clamp come down. Really nice. So let's do that again. Put it in here where it's not touching the buttons. Oh, did it automatically because I touched the back button. It's clamped in here. And that's pretty good. That's really nice. That's one of the better clamps I've found for a phone. I'm gonna have to use this for my phone mount when I'm doing stuff because my other ones that I use, it comes off really easy. All right, after you get this guy out of the box, to, before you can use it on your camera, you gotta download a piece of software. And you just go to the App Store, you look up, it's called Axoon C. So you hit Get, pull that down, da, 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 install. All right, we are done. Perfect. All right, so now I'm pretty much ready to go on this guy. So we're gonna go out in the field, we're gonna test this guy, we're gonna hook it up to the phone and play with it. Then I'm gonna see if I can hook it up to my tablet. I know you can and see what that looks like. I can see that being really cool for me if you do a lot of vide videography to use this thing with that tablet as opposed to the phone. You can see more of your screen when you're trying to shoot something, especially if you got something that's stationary or you're not moving a whole lot. It's gonna be really cool. Now, I'll need a different mount for this. So if I ever find a mount for it for the iPad, I'll let you guys know, but I think it's gonna be really good. Like uh, when I was out shooting the otters the other day, I didn't have uh, any of the external monitor recorders on me. I'd love to have it to show you guys where the eyes hit and what the focus is doing on this Nikon was out photographing those otters. But it's really cool. I wasn't moving a lot for the otters. I just got down, got extremely low, got extremely quiet didn't move much, those otters would get used to me and they would kind of do their thing and not be afraid of me. Uh, and if I'd have had maybe something like a tablet monitor, it would have been even easier to just sit there and not have to lay down because I was laying on the ground because I, was in, I could use the LCD screen, but it's smaller. My eyes aren't as good as more, so I'm looking through the viewfinder most of the time. But to have a tablet that's bigger to do that same thing, I could do the recording and the shooting right there with sitting down instead of having to lay down or things like that. Uh, and that's kind of where I see using these things. So anyway, shut up. I'm gonna get out in the field. We're gonna go test this guy out and see if it's really good or it's just a piece of poop. But I bet it's gonna be really good. So let's go test it out and see how it works out. See you out in the field in just a minute. All 
All right, these are things you're gonna need to run your SEMO with your phone and your camera. So first thing you need is the base plate that you mount your camera to. This also has the transformation with HDMI to work between your camera and your phone. You're gonna need the hot shoe mount, which is really, really cool. I really like this hot shoe mount. You're gonna need a Sony LP-F, whatever size you want, battery. It's gonna mount to the back of that, so let's do that now. So slide this in here, mount it right there. Next you're gonna need, you're gonna need a HDMI cable. This is gonna be go between your, from your CMO. Let's plug that in now. And this other end is gonna go to your camera This is gonna mount on top. But my camera's over there filming right now, so we'll do that in a minute. Next you're gonna need is this little USB-C to lightning port. So you put the USB side, see, whoa, put the USB-C side into the video out. Put your battery back in that just came out. Get up to lock, make sure you hear it click. I didn't do that a minute ago, so it fell out. Next thing you're gonna do is gonna put your phone in here. So you take your phone, put your phone in, push it, locks right in. That's it. Pretty simple. So we're gonna hook this up to the camera and we're gonna start working with it. Talk to you here in a bit. So something that interesting that just happened is when I plugged this first battery in, is it caught on fire? Um, right here between the two connectors, I'll let you see that. I don't know if it'll focus, but right here, it caught on fire. I don't know if this is a battery or the Asun SEMO. I won't see it's a SEMO, it's probably the battery. Um, yeah, it was kind of scary because it started smoking and you know, blue smoke that came up and it kind of singed the back of the SEMO too. It didn't hurt the SEMO, but this could have just been the battery. This battery is probably about eight months old. It's been used heavily, but I did just take it off my Atomos, put it right in the SEMO, the first fire up it caught fire. Now, again, it's probably the battery, not the SEMO, but if you guys have that happen, let me know. Um, I've searched the web, I can't find anything about it. I really can't find a whole lot about fires besides the cracking and swelling. So, uh, little disclaimer there. I don't know what it was. I don't think it's the SEMO. I think it's just kind of a combination of the battery, something happened. So, just word of the wise. So, let's go out and shoot this guy and see what it looks like. All right, now that we got this all put together, this piece, we're gonna put this on the camera. So first thing we do, is we slide this in the cold shoe. What's really cool here, let me zoom in and show it to you, is this little piece right here actually has an arm and it makes it real easy to tighten this up. Done. Normally what you'd have to do, you'd have to spin, spin, spin to that, but this little lever arm makes it great. So, next thing you do, come back in here, so maybe you can see it a little bit. So we're gonna open up this side door we're going to plug the HDMI cable into the HDMI out. It is negative 10 degrees right now, so it is a bit cold. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this cable here, and you're going to plug it in. It's a lightning port. You're going to plug it in the bottom of your phone. Pretty simple. So after you got all your cables hooked up to this camera, so you've got your HDMI in and out, you've got your USB-C lightning, got your battery on everything, you go to the back side here, there's an on-off switch, you hit that. Now, one thing I don't like about this is that that light is a green light and it's a white plastic, you can barely see. You have to actually shield it a little bit to even see that it's on. So once it's on, you should see the display like you'll see here. So you have two buttons on the back of this SEMO up here. The first one's going to be an iOS circle, and below that's going to say live. And if the way it works on the iOS, that's how you record what's on this on your phone, what's coming from your camera. So it's going to look just like your iPhone does. When it's not recording, it's just a circle with a complete red circle. When you hit record, like hit the iOS live, or hit the iOS button, excuse me, it's going to be a little square, just like on your iPhone, to tell you that's recording. So now, right now, it's recording what's coming out of my camera. I touch the iOS again, goes back to circle, not recording. Below that is a live button. When you hit that, it's going to bring up different ways that you can stream to different services and uh, see what's on here for service type. You can go a custom so you can set up your own parameters for whatever live you're going to stream to. There's BitBill, Facebook, and YouTube that you can stream live to. So I could do live streaming out in the field of what's coming out of my camera if I want to. That's what I'm going to record. So that's really cool. Don't know if I'll ever use it. 
but it's there to use if I needed to use it. So now that I got this set up, I'm going to run around and photograph a few things and capture what's on the screen to show you kind of what it looks like. And today I'm at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. It's 30 minutes outside of Anchorage. It's a really cool place. If you ever come to Anchorage, come out here and see the animals. It's nice. You've got wolves, you've got lynx, eagles, fox, buffalo, elk, reindeer, all kinds of stuff. Porcupine, you name it, it's out here. It's pretty cool. Everything that's in Alaska is pretty much here. And uh, most of the animals are rescue animals that they bring here. Uh, other animals that they do do for profit are the buffalo, the elk, and the caribou or reindeer. But everything else is pretty much rescued animals that came here to be rehabilitated or they can't be rehabilitated or released back to the wild so they stay here. But it's an amazing place. It is negative 11 degrees out here today and it feels like negative 11 degrees. There's no wind so we got a lot of hoar frost and it's just beautiful out here today. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run around and play with this CMO, see how it stacks up against my uh, Atomos. And I can tell you right now, it's a little lighter rig um, and a little easier to set up. I've um, got to click a few more, con configure a few more things, but it's uh, pretty easy to set up and pretty easy to use. And what I'm saying earlier, I won't have to carry the Atomos because I already got my phone with me. It's one less thing I have to carry. I have to carry is the base plate and the battery. And then I can do that in the field. So I can see me being this more of my hiking rig to record the screen as opposed to using the Atomos. But anyway, let's go photograph some animals, show what the back of this looks like. I'll wrap this thing up because it is really cold out here. And get me some gloves on. But I'll talk to you here in a minute as we find some animals. Take care.
we're gonna wrap this up on the SIBO thing and there's actually a train going by here probably here right now and it's setting the wolves off right now so it's pretty cool the wolves are all howling but anyway the SIBO worked really good today I like this little rig it's pretty nice to have it record right to the phone makes it pretty easy to transfer the files and everything looks really good on the back of the phone when it's recording off that camera it looks really really good so I really like it um, got caribou right here behind me um, so I'll step over here so you can see them while I talk but anyway the SIBO did really really good over here. There they are. They did great. I, I like the little thing. Um, at 160 some dollars versus, you know, 500 just for the base part of the Atomos. I think it's a really good value. And I think it's really good for when I go hiking, running around real fast. I can just bring just that back plate, a couple cables, and that battery. And I'm pretty mobile with it. I can leave that in my backpack at all times or even my pocket to run and go if I need to hook that up to record something with the automatic, uh, with the external recorder, excuse me. But anyway, guys, that's how I use an external recorder. I use it to record what my camera's seeing. Also, I can take stills at the same time. So I can sit there and record a clean video signal to the recorder and take my stills. That way I got video and stills at the same time. I also use it like I was a while ago with, uh, with these guys right here, these caribou. I was actually looking through the recorder instead of my LCD and using it to frame up and take pictures because these guys aren't moving a whole lot because they're confined to this uh, little area they got here, probably an acre and a half of their little pen. It's pretty cool. And uh, I could use it to take my pictures and frame everything up with the recorder because I had a bigger screen. So I've got basically the iPhone size screen to, re to record that or to see what I'm trying to see to take the picture. Pretty cool. But anyway, guys, that's it. SEMO, really cool product. Atomo is even another better product, but it's more expensive. So if you want to get dip your toes into using an external recorder, that's what I would do. Buy the SEMO, hook up to your phone, play with it, see if you like it. If not, you're only out of 150 bucks or so. Anyway, you guys have a good day. Uh, go watch this video over here if you want to watch something else, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.